So is the Fujifilm X-S10 the perfect Fujifilm camera for photo and video? Well, let's talk about it. What's up everyone, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer and photography educator based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And in this video, I'm going to give you my honest first impressions of the brand new Fujifilm X-S10 from the perspective of a professional wedding photographer, a professional portrait photographer, a YouTube content creator, and most importantly, a dad. A dad who wants to document his growing family in a beautiful way with both still photos and video. So for context, I've had this camera for about one week now. Yes, I know technically the XS10 will be shipping out and sold in stores officially today on November 19th, but I'm actually now an official Fujifilm X photographer, so I was able to get my copy shipped out a little bit early. But rest assured, I'm still going to be honest, as I want you all to be able to make the best decision possible with your hard earned dollars. Because let's be real, $1,000 is not a small investment at all. But rest assured, I was able to do quite a bit of testing and we're gonna go pretty deep on the controls and usability aspects of this Fujifilm camera. As a veteran professional Fujifilm photographer who already owns the Fujifilm X-T3 and the X-100V, this release was pretty exciting to me. Why? Because Fujifilm inadvertently made possibly the perfect compact hybrid photo and video camera. What makes the X-S10 unique is how it packages all the different technologies and ergonomics together in one small body. Again, it has a smaller, more compact body similar to the Fujifilm X-T30, but at the same time, it has a deeper grip that's really reminiscent of the Fujifilm X-H1. On top of that, add in the top of the line sensor and processor like the X-T4 and a similar articulating screen that um, is for selfies and kind of vlogging. And the icing on the cake is that it has IBIS in a smaller IBIS unit that fits inside this small compact camera. I'm pretty sure you can already see where I'm going with this, right? I mean, the camera has a dedicated video record button, so you know Fujifilm is getting serious about video with this little camera. So what exactly makes this more of a beginner oriented camera though. I think the main thing really is the removal of the dedicated shutter speed, exposure compensation, and ISO dials in exchange for the PASM mode dial. I mean, if it were up to me, I actually consider the shutter speed and ISO dials more conducive to learning photography. In my head, for newbies or anybody interested in photography, it's better to kind of put shutter speed and ISO in front of them so they can get interested in experimenting with manual exposure, but I can see Fujifilm's point in making the jump from a different camera system over to Fujifilm a little bit more relatable and accessible by using the traditional PASM dials, especially for those who just want to jump right in and go into an auto mode or something like that. So with that kind of context and setup for the story, let's get into the nitty gritty about my first impressions with the XS10 starting with the pros. So right off the bat, a big plus is that it inherits the same image quality and autofocus from Fujifilm's flagship, the X-T4. So you don't have to worry about getting any decreases in low light autofocus performance or decreases in autofocus speed or, you know, worse high ISO image quality. You're getting the best of the best and it's going to be the same as the X-T4 and the newly updated firmware of the X-T3. And because of this, I'm not going to be showing you any type of image samples in this video, but the truth is you can look at X-T3 photos and XC4 samples and really you'll get an idea of what the XS10 can do because it's going to have the same image capabilities. As far as IBIS goes or in-body image stabilization, yes, it's rated slightly weaker in strength compared to the XT4, about, you know, 0.5 stops weaker, but you have to accept some trade-offs um, when going to a smaller body. So for me, while I don't ever use shutter speeds in my professional photo work to enlist IBIS, this is a big plus to have IBIS in the XS10, specifically a compact body that's perfect for travel videos, home videos of my kids, uh, vlogging for this YouTube channel, and other type of run and gun video situations. And on the topic of videos, the XS10 pretty much has most of the same video codecs that I already use in my Fujifilm X-T3 to make content for this channel, with the exception of the 4K 60 frames per second, which I actually don't use too much. But I do get the added benefit of having 240 frames per second which I don't have on the X-T3, and so far it's been pretty fun to use. Okay, so now for the ergonomics. Um, the new grip on the X-S10 is deeper. Most of the lenses I mounted on it balance great,
great without really any issues. However, I did notice that if you use a larger lens, like um, for example, the 50 to 140, you will get a little bit tight in the space between the grip and the lens, especially for me, I have smaller hands. So it, it's, I could tell it's getting a, a little bit tight. So if you have bigger hands than me, you might run into some issues. So to finish off the different positives of this camera are the selfie screen and the mic jack placement. So I'll be honest that I'm not really a fan of the articulating screen for professional photo work specifically. I typically shoot photos with the LCD screen about like 85% of the time just because I do a lot of low angle and high angle shots and I prefer to be looking kind of down the center rather than off to the side like on the X-T4. And of course the X-T4 and the EXS10 both share the side articulating screen. With that said, for video work and vlogs, I love the screen as I don't have to hook up an external monitor and I can kind of free my from this studio setup. And as a dad, I'm always documenting my family, but I'm not always in the photos just because I'm always the one with the camera. So with this screen, it's pretty much a game changer because I'm able to set up shots that I can be in with my kids. And having these types of photos where I can interact with my kids and just be with them and be in the photo with them, well, I think that's really gonna be the one thing that I cherish the most coming out of this camera and adding it to my kit. And then for vlogging and run and gun shooting, I typically plug in a Rode Video Micro in the mic jack. And I was actually using the XC4 for a limited amount of time. And I tried some vlogging on it and I noticed that the screen would always run into the cable when you flipped it out. They were able to fix this issue on the XS10 by having the mic jack placed slightly above the swivel mount. That way it would be um, above the screen instead of behind it. And that makes a world of a difference when using a microphone with the XS10. Okay, so now for the cons. Well, I would say they're more like pet peeves or small annoyances that I wish could be changed. They aren't really deal breakers for me, but it's always best to kind of present to you all the information, especially if you're existing Fujifilm shooters, because if you're used to the controls and the menus, um, there are just some specific differences that might be annoying or deal breakers for you. So because I am a full manual exposure shooter for both stills and videos, the first thing I noticed was the ISO adjustment and how it was operated on the XS10. So on my X-T3 and X100V, I actually used the rear command dial to adjust shutter speed, the front command dial to adjust ISO, and the aperture ring to adjust aperture. On the XS10, it's not possible to adjust the ISO with the front command dial at all in any different mode. You can't customize it, it just isn't possible. So for me, there's a lot of muscle memory with changing the ISO with the front dial. And that for me kind of takes a lot of muscle memory to get used to. And I also have to add that the intended ISO button that they have is a little unnatural to reach for me um, because you have to go a little bit further back. So I actually swapped the ISO button with the dedicated record button, which is a little bit closer to the shutter. And it seems to be a little bit more comfortable for me. Another big kind of noticeable thing is you cannot press in or click the rear command dial. On Fujifilm cameras, this is typically the way that you zoom in for both shooting and playback. So to remedy this, they changed the functionality of the joystick to when you click it, it zooms in. But this kind of makes it complicated because on the older Fujifilm cameras, you could double click the joystick to center the autofocus area. Now you have to press the back button to center it. So if you're used to the double click to center kind of muscle memory thing, again, that's gonna be something that you're gonna have to get used to. And because this is more of a budget camera, or a beginner camera, they're gonna remove some of the controls and customizations, especially the physical buttons. And the one that I thought was a little odd that they removed was the AF mode selector. You can't change between manual focus, autofocus single, and autofocus continuous on the body itself, which is usually somewhere in the front. Um, you have to program a function button if you wanna do this quickly. Another kind of minor annoyance is the distance between the manual shooting mode and the dedicated video mode. You have to pretty much like rotate it like 180 degrees. There's no way to really do it without taking away your eye from the camera because it doesn't have a physical stop to it either. I really like the way that the X-T4 did it where it just had a switch between movie and stills. And I know, yes, there is a dedicated record button, but the XS10 allows you to store video specific settings only on the video mode on the mode dial. So for example, if you shoot video in a turn up, but you like shooting stills with a black and white Acros mode, if you hit the record button when you're shooting in the still photo mode, it's not gonna record the footage in Eternal like you always like it. It's actually gonna record in whatever film simulation you have currently set for photos, and that's gonna be the black and white. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna ever use the dedicated um, record button. Another thing that's related to this is the lack of the ability to save video-centric settings to the custom setting bank. So C1, C2, C3, C4. I feel like this would have been an awesome thing for those like me who want to change between maybe say like vlogging to talking head footage to slow-mo to B-roll, all those types of 
different shooting modes are going to require different frame rates, probably different bit rates, probably different resolutions, and those are not things you can save on the C1, C2, C3, C4. You can always save certain autofocus settings and then the color settings. I feel like if they open it up to all the video modes, it's really going to increase the power and the functionality of the camera, especially since we're already going from seven custom setting banks to four. I would at least like it to kind of open up with the ability to save some different video type centric settings here. And just like any of the other budget cameras, um, the non-pro Fujifilm cameras, the XS10 has the same type of downgrade. So it only has one SD card slot and it's a UHS-1 speed. It also has a slower max shutter speed, a slightly slower continuous frames per second um, shooting rate, and a slower flash sync speed. And of course, there's no weather sealing on this camera and the battery life. So we can't forget the battery life. The XS10 uses the old battery that's same from the X-T3 and it's not the newer longer life one from the X-T4. So it doesn't last as long as the X-T4 obviously, but it also doesn't even last as long as the X-T3 just because of the added power draw of the IBIS. So be sure to either buy more batteries or invest in a power bank if you want to start shooting longer sessions or longer video shoots. Okay, so it's kind of been brought up a little bit, but let's talk about it a little bit more. One of the biggest concerns that everyone has is is the PASM dial. You know what? Honestly, I actually don't mind it that much. Like I said before, even though I shoot in full manual exposure, I don't really use the top dials at all. I like to have all my hands on the camera and not move them to the top at all to shoot. So on my X-T3 or my X100V, again, the front command dial is ISO, the rear command dial is shutter speed set to T mode so that I can choose any shutter speed I want. And then I have the aperture dial for the aperture controls. If Fujifilm added the option to change the front command dial to ISO down the road, I'd be 100% happy with this camera. But until then, there is some muscle memory adjustments that I have to do between the times when I shoot with my X-T3 and then I pick up my XS10 very quickly. It's something that I have to kind of adjust a little bit in the moment to press down the ISO button in order to change instead of just moving the dial like I would want to. And if you use the top dials heavily, then that's another big thing that you have to consider um, because you won't really have those on the XS10. And because I know a lot of people have mentioned in their pre-production reviews that it's very hard to like turn on and off the camera. It's a very hard switch to, to move. But on my copy of the camera, I didn't notice this at all. So considering all these pros, cons, and quirks, how do I plan to use the Fujifilm XS10 in my kit? Well, for me, it's mainly going to be a personal camera for anything that I might want to shoot video with. So going out for traveling or family documentation and you know vlogging for my YouTube channel. For anything that I just want to shoot stills, even if it's for personal work, I think I'd be reaching for my X100V for personal stills um, as I like the 23mm focal length and the smaller compact body. And I'm sure everyone's asking, is the XS10 good enough for professional work? I would say yes, purely based on the image quality and the low light autofocus performance alone. With that said, for me personally, again, I said I'm I'm really used to the controls of the X-T3 as well as the screen. So I'm not going to be using the XS10 for any professional wedding shoots or portrait shoots if I, I don't really have to. And it's not to say that I won't get the same image quality or performance. It's just my own type of technique of shooting and just feeling in my groove is not going to be the same with the XS10. So, you know, obviously I'm going to use the, my trusty X-T3s for those types of high pressure situations. But if I did venture into pro video work, I think the XS10 would have a lot more kind of game time in those types of situations. Overall, for me, the XS10 is really the perfect like B or C camera to go along with my existing kit. And it's nearly perfect when it comes to the hybrid photo and video capture of my family, something that I actually prioritize and shoot more often often and cherish more than kind of like my own body of work when it comes to client work. And as far as how how does the XS10 fit within the current Fujifilm lineup, I would say it fits, you know, slightly below the X-T3 in terms of stills work, maybe even laterally or slightly above the X-T3 for video work. And budget and size wise, it's comparable to the X-T30. But it really is far more powerful than it since it does gain the IBIS and the faster autofocus. So who is this camera for and what do I recommend? Well, if you already have a professional camera, either a Fujifilm camera or not, the XS10 is really gonna serve as that perfect second or third camera dedicated to hybrid photo and video in that compact package. You know, the one that's perfect for family travel and just doing anything for yourself. And if you're a newbie to photography or new to Fujifilm cameras, I think many of the 
cons and quirks that I did mention are something that you're not even going to notice. So if you don't have a Fujifilm camera, rest assured this thing is awesome and it's going to have the capabilities of the flagship camera. So you don't have really anything to worry about. Um, if you want to focus just on stills though and you want a Fujifilm camera, I still think that the Fujifilm X-E3 is a really great bang for your buck since it's the same exact price but has a lot more you know robust controls. The X-E30 is also there for a compact stills camera and the X-100V is really my top recommendation if you want to be kind of learn the purest form of photography or you're really into street photography or want the most compact still camera that you can get from Fujifilm. And if you just want a compact camera that can do it all, I gotta say the XS10 is hard to beat. It really is that good. So I'm hoping these insights and observations were helpful to you in deciding whether or not the XS10 is the right camera for you. So if you're ready to pull the trigger and buy one, I have affiliate links down in the description below so you can support the channel at no additional cost to you. If you have any specific questions about the XS10, let me know down in the comments and I'm really gonna do my best to answer them for you as this is a new type of Fujifilm camera. It's not too much content or specific, you know, breakdowns of the quirks of the camera. And if you want me to make a full video breaking down down my full settings and menu setup for how I got it to work for me, um, give this video a like and let me know down in the comments below that you want to see that video. As always, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as I make a new Fujifilm or photography video every week. And if a week's too long for you, please be sure to follow me on Instagram at, at @reggiebphoto for new tips, tricks, tutorials, and behind the scenes every single day. Alright, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.